Welcome back to the Crooked Spine Show. Today I have Angela McKay, as you see there. She is a specialist in life coaching, but also helping, right now mostly women also work with men if need be, is helping women understand, and like that's her clientele, is how to deal with our daily stress. How do we find our ways to self-care to maintain a healthy mental and physical state? So Angela, with your, with your work right now, what is the biggest, if you want to call it a reason, people need to find that space to make themselves feel like they're taking care of them, not just everybody else? Well, you and I had chatted a little bit mm -hmm. um, that the clients that I find myself working with the most are women who are in transitionary spaces. They have taken the weight of the world on their shoulders, be it um, pressures from society to, to be something, be it to carry all the labels that they wanted to, to mm -hmm. carry, be it to um, have all of these successes underneath their belt. Um, it's perception then, it's perception of what they should be. Yes, yes. Yeah. And they now find themselves in a place where they feel enough's enough. Something mm -hmm. needs to give. And usually what needs to give is their perception underneath that pile of, of expectation and labels and titles that, that they have taken on. Um, they know that they need to get it done. All of this, all of these things exist. They are there, but they're ready for change. And they just don't know how to get out from underneath all those stressors that they're feeling to really find that change within their everyday existence. So wow. I do take that, that self-care, self-discovery focus when I'm working with these women in the coaching. And when they're in that, that, if you want to call it stress state, what is their body going through? What are their, what are they feeling? What are they, what are their physical and mental, if you want to call it challenges at that point? And I, I'm sure you see, it's interesting, you know, you align um, spines and then put on this podcast, we can align people with value systems too, within mm -hmm. their wellness space. But they'll see physiological um, impact with that. And they'll also see mental impact. So anxiety um, and depression aren't unheard of. When you're operating against your value system, just for the sake of getting something done, your body will start to feel that. And that impact over time, you'll get the anxiety and depression and resentment, a lack of patience. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, in the physical sense, those, those heightened shoulders, I'm sure you work with that all the time. All the time. All the time. The heightened mm -hmm. shoulders, uh, that that racing um, heart as as you're going through some of those those other symptoms. So, I mean, when your life is out of alignment with where you want to go, even if you haven't figured out what that is yet, you start to see all of that within your body. Well, I think a lot of people will, when they feel, okay, I'm not sleeping well, maybe I think of sleep aid. I'm not, I'm not. If you want me to not having headaches and a lot of tension, shoulder pain, you know, say something for pain and help me sleep and help me have less headaches versus dealing with a root problem or the root cause of what's going on. And, and a lot of it is it gets to a certain point where, like you had said, they've had enough. They go, okay, I've, I've tried everything else. This isn't working. And now it's getting to where it's affecting me chronically, where now I'm experiencing from, if you want to call it being overly stressed to now anxious and now even depression. Mm -hmm. And now they won't put you on drug medication to deal with that. Is that the real problem? And, and when you're dealing with people, do you ask them about their medical history in the sense where are they seeing, uh, are they taking medications for their, their problems and are they seeing a therapist or how do you interview them? Right? How do you assess them? Yes, only so much. So as a life coach, I am not a doctor. I am mm -hmm. not a licensed medical health professional. Um, so my clients, if they have any of that going on in their life, that is being that is being taken care of by their medical professionals. It is a good awareness for me to have, though, because that way, too, if if my coaching is going to affect them in a certain way, I want to make sure that that's lining up with their medical treatment, too, so they can run that information by their doctors. Good, good. And I like that because you're you're dealing with the whole person being mm -hmm. not saying okay, it's going to this is going to fix everything, no matter what else you're doing. Right. And, and you know this when when someone's on medications, a lot of it is now. They have to, they, they've been, if you want to call it, I, I call it handicapped because they're depending on that to get them through. Mm -hmm. so they have to make that shift. Okay. I have to have, I have to find, if I'm not going to, that's going to get me through now. If I'm helping me, if I'm not ibuprofen, ibuprofen deficient. And then at that point, how do I deal with this problem overall? What kind of mental state is someone in when they, when they talked about starting, if you want to call it coaching with you? Are they, you won't call it stress, but are they just unsure of where to go? Or are they feeling like this is it? I've had enough? Kind of both. So 
I, I work with um, overwhelmed, driven, do-it-all women. Um, mm -hmm. This is a stubborn bunch, and I've talked about that before. I will call hey, my my demographic. They are stubborn. They will try everything they can on their own before mm -hmm. they reach out to somebody for help. Yep. Mm -hmm. So here's help, right? But generally speaking, when someone comes to me, um, this is someone who has been um, people pleasing for for quite a long time. So it's a difficult adjustment. But I had done a number of interviews when I was um, choosing. That my demographic and really where I wanted to go with my coaching. Some of the most common words were, um, I just, I don't have the time for myself. Um, at the end of the night, you know, I'm depleted. I'm impatient. I yell at the kids. I feel bad. If I do find time for myself, I feel guilty. I feel guilty that I'm not spending that time with my child or I'm not getting something done off of my to-do list. So there's just all these words of guilt and shame that get wrapped up into the idea of stepping back to do something that's for you. And I actually do a lot of work to take the stigma out of self-care is the way that I say it, because it's been boiled down to this really popular topic where self-care is a spa mask or a manicure or going out for coffee. And while it very well can be, what I'm working with these women on is finding a self-care routine that creates lasting impact. So something that actually gets to the root of something that's going on in their life, we make a small adjustment and it creates a lasting impact versus what feels like kind of a quick fix. And I like that what you'd mentioned to a routine where whatever worst stressors are going to be for that day, that week, that month, that holiday, that event, that Halloween per se, at that point, how do we make our body handle that stress or event, that routine, and not feel like we're just banging our head in the wall? Yes. And that's what, when it comes to, and I'll just use med meditation as an example, um, having something like a meditation routine, what it can help do is take your stress baseline down. <laughs> stress mm -hmm. will always be there. And in, in some regards, stress is actually quite good for you, depending on what it is and how you're processing it. But by finding a routine in your life that takes that stress baseline down, it means that any time that, that life does its roller coaster, you're at a healthier state to begin with. Mm -hmm. So when you peak, you don't peak nearly as high as you would before in those overwhelmed states. And I like that because once you have the routine, whatever it's going to be, and, and you give yourself a chance to get into that routine, then that feeling of going into an event where it might be stressful won't stress you out. Correct, or at least not as much. Um, and you've got you've got a better toolkit to to handle that when it happens. And I tell people too, it may be I call it maybe it's exciting instead of being stressful. Maybe it's yeah. something where it you have use different terminology. How do you work with someone's language so they don't stay in that stressful state? I I, I call it a stressful state where they feel overwhelmed all the time. It really depends on the individual. So I will say that within my coaching, we're taking very individualized approaches. Um, I think one of the biggest traps that that the women I work with fall into is they look at what someone else is doing and then try to to mirror that for themselves. It may or may not work. Generally speaking, that's that's great for them, but it's mm -hmm. not really going to get at the source of what it is that that you have going on. Um, so your question, repeat your question again, so I don't get off track. Is, is how do we find certain terminology that helps someone change their language to help change their routine, what they're used to, that's got them in that stress state in that overwhelming, uh, if you want to call it environment, to more of a better language to help them stay out of that? Great. Okay. So, I mean, that's part of the powerful questioning and coaching that you get to do. So those, yeah. of course, come up in a moment where you're taking an exact situation and mm -hmm. kind of giving them a question that serves it in a different way. But I do focus quite a bit. Um, I am... A believer in most of the idea of law of attraction and manifestation is that is where your your mind goes, where your mind goes, your energy flows, and that you do create the life that you're living. So the more that you're positioning yourself in a place of what it is you do want mm -hmm. more than what you don't want, um, you're going to find much more success in your life because your energy is actually going that direction. Um, I'm also big on gratitude. Um, I was big on gratitude before, and then I had a coach of my own that. Um, is is a, a gratitude queen um and then i focused on it even more because there is an element i i want to stay away from toxic positivity where you tell yourself that everything's great and happy and perfect because life does have downs and we need to acknowledge them mm -hmm. however finding gratitude 
in every space is very important. Um, because for, for every down, there is a lesson that you get to learn from that. There is a perspective that you get to gain from that. So I'm big on gratitude. So I would say both of those are ways that we start to shift mindsets and language um, okay. from those more negative cycles that we find ourselves in. Well, a lot of it is you're, you're, what I well, like to, when I deal with patients too, a lot of it is once someone starts feeling better, you hear their language change. You hear their tone of voice change. You, you hear the stress almost going away from their, their tone of voice and how they speak and, and their phrases they use. He said when they have those things now built into the routine of their language, their terminology, then that almost, does that also help keep them at a lesser stress state? Yes. And what, it's funny yeah. that you're talking about that. And I, um, I believe it was, was it a blog post that I wrote recently where I actually referred to my coaching as sneaky coaching. And in yes. life coaching, you generally don't want to say sneaky life coaching, just like you don't want like sneaky chiropractic care. Yeah, like I'm going to get inside. Right. Um, What's that? Yeah. <laughs> get inside, yeah. Um, but what I meant is, so within our coaching, well, there's actually seven areas of self-care that we can touch on, um, but sure. we'll generally choose a focus to move the client forward in. But there's this really awesome magic process that happens around that where while you're working on that one focus, it's actually creating this whole perspective change within you. So no matter which space of your life you're walking forward in, you're bringing that new perspective with you and it just has an overall effect. So I call it sneaky because um, it kind of is. It just spills into these other pieces of your life that you're showing up in. What's well, amazing when, when you think about it, every event's an event, but how you perceive it, your perception is your reality. And then you react to it in, a, in your way, correct? Mm -hmm. It can either be positive or negative. It doesn't have to be. It's, it's your choice. Right. Wow. Right. Wow. You're creating. Mm -hmm. And the perception, when you have that going on, good for that person, that self-care person, how do that, they now get people around them to understand that they want to take care of them where they may have to put some of the burden on, say, a spouse or a mom or a dad? instead of themselves, how do you, how do you get them to deal with that on a one-to-one -one basis with somebody else? We work on that in session. That's all about boundaries. Um, okay. So boundaries are what you put into place to help you take care of yourself. So it's really easy to overextend for everybody else. And all the while you're completely depleting you, you're hating mm -hmm. how you feel both mentally and physically. Um, you're hating how you end up showing up when you're in that exhausted state. So it does take boundaries. It does take asking for help. And that's one of the examples I use when I say it might not, it's probably not a manicure. It might be, but it probably isn't. Um, other times it might be saying no to your mother when she's creating plans and you already had something else going on because that's what was good for you. And that's what was good for your family. It's some um, hard work. Mm -hmm. It's hard work to do. Um, but what's on the other side of it is so much better for you than that constant cycle you're in without doing the hard work. And is it, it's amazing that I, that I see I me mean, personally and professionally is how much kids, I mean, kids like in their thirties and forties and fifties don't want to deal with that with their parents. They'd rather just let their parents do their thing and they'll deal with it later because it's almost, it's too stressful in their mind mm -hmm. how to deal with that. What's a good strategy that you would, I guess a general strategy would help an older adult child deal with a parental issue that is a constant, just they go back and forth and just, just drains that, that adult child. There's a lot to that one. I'll preface it by saying that the reaction of their parent to the boundary that the person sets is not theirs to own. Good. So we all have reactions to a situation. They come from within us. They are ours to own. So when that adult child sets a boundary for themselves and their parent has a reaction, which they will, because this is different. That boundary has created something different. It's important to remember that you do not own that reaction. You allow them to go through that, but you hold your boundary because you created it for yourself and you created it in kindness and compassion for you and for others. But you have to take care of yourself. A lot of it comes down to clear communication. It requires being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It requires being authentic. It requires being compassionate and empathetic. So it's all about creating that conversation that's not coming from a defensive place. It's just coming from a place within you where you know what's right for you and having that vulnerable conversation with the person that you love and want to keep in your life, but you need to lead a healthier life. 
And that alone right there, I think, would probably help a lot of people in general, especially dealing with maybe a family issue in their in, in their personal family, their husband and kids, what have you, dealing with another a, 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 a parent on, say, a, a mom's side. And with that, too, you'd mentioned in a loving way. Mm-hmm. How how do I don't want I'm going to say how do and, and with that mindset of, of, again, not owning their response to your boundary, is that hard for a lot of people? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, so many of us, when you things are just kind of set up in a way where mm-hmm. you take ownership of somebody else's feeling. Mm-hmm. You feel something from them and, and you, then you feel the need to kind of fix it. So we talked about, I talked about people pleasing. That's right at the root of people pleasing. You want to make sure that others feel good. And mm-hmm. sometimes you do that at the expense of yourself. It sure didn't make you feel good, but you made them feel good. And all the while, like I said, you're losing yourself a little bit more every time that happens. And you almost want, again, that's going back to the expectation of what was expected before, but now I'm going to take care of myself. How do I change that? Is that make somebody uncomfortable? Changing? Just just in general, dealing with, with self-care. The, yeah. the expectation of, of going, why, why would I want to take care of me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, There's generally a lot of resistance and it comes in the form of excuses. Mm -hmm. Um, The excuse of, I don't have the time. There hasn't been a single person that I've worked with that we haven't found the time. It's just a matter of escaping the cycles and the mindsets that you have yourself set up in. Um, It's also really easy to say that when you're not sure how to do that thing. If you don't know how, and it's just this big ambiguous ball of, you know, Lord only knows what, um, then you're just gonna say, yeah, I don't have, I don't have the time for that. It's the time not only for that to build a routine, but also time to figure out how to build a routine is, and that's your job, correct? Yes. I help them to build the routine. And then there's also the other side of it that they want to escape from that. They know they might have to do something hard, like ask for help. Mm -hmm. And then when they do that, by working with you as a life coach in that scenario, in this, in your special, I'm called special field, mm-hmm. does it help someone get there faster? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we all thrive in accountability. <laughs> when you have somebody that you're speaking with and they're asking you questions and you're having to listen to yourself and you're coming up with solutions, because it really is all about them getting them to kind of come up with this from within, because the more you can come up with from within, the more clear it's going to be for you, the more it's going to stick. So working with a coach, you're able to actually get some of that out, find a place to go, form a plan, and then have somebody who's saying, um, how did it go? So you know that that piece is coming. Um, There's just that, that space too, between a coach and a client where you get to speak in ways that you don't necessarily speak uh, with anybody else. It just opens it up. We create the space for that thought process and perspective to happen. I think you're helping a lot of people understand, like I said, especially women at this point to, I need to find a way before I have a health condition, before I, for example, now, now want to call it act out against my kids or my husband or, or somebody else before it comes a major issue. So at that point, I don't have to get there and you're giving them you said the step-by-step process, how to do that. What is your, your seven, is it seven step care plan? Yeah. So on my website, there's a free guide that's called seven ways to self care. And if someone isn't quite ready for coaching, and like I said, I work with a demographic that would rather go for the resources first. Um, I do have this guide there. I, seven ways sounds like a lot. So you think seven ways to self care. I can't even think of one. Why would I want seven? Well, um, the seven different areas I generally find when I work with a client that there's one, there's one that if we work in that space, it will create the most impact for them overall. And the really great thing is that there's a lot of crossover between that seven. So if we work on one, we're generally touching on a couple of others too. But when I'm talking about finding that meaningful time for yourself, that time with lasting impact, it's a matter of finding where we're going to get that from. So um, for any of your listeners, if they want to grab that guide, they sure can. It goes through the seven ways of self-care. It talks about what self-care actually is. um, Mm -hmm. So you can get yourself off on the right foot. And it has some kind of... um, probing questions for each area for them to reflect on, to see if they connect with so that they by themselves can start thinking a little bit more about what they can change in their lives to start feeling better. 
you know, what I like a lot, I mean, and, and we all know this, this isn't a secret. Women are a lot smarter than men. That's just, it's a, it is. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to disagree with you. <laughs> good, good, good. I hope not. If not, we'll have to debate that later. Uh, a lot of it <laughs> is you're going, like I said, women are going to go and search ways to do it themselves first. Mm -hmm. But they, but I think they're going to be more likely to ask for help also. So when they ask for help, they're asking from a due diligence standpoint. They've done their own work. Okay, I've yes. gotten so far with what I can do. What else can now Angela give yeah. me to get to that point? Yes. And that's a lot of the women who come to me in that coaching. They're at the now what? Mm -hmm. So I've read this. I've tried that. I keep reading. But now what? How do I get myself going forward? And I, and think I love that. I love because, I mean, they're, they're coming with this knowledge behind them. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not coming them. from a place of I've done something. Now I have to now I have to figure a way to get out of here. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. trying to find the next step. Mm -hmm. And when they're doing that, uh, what does it take? I don't know if there's a way to generalize it, a time frame that you'd want to work with someone to see those lasting routine changes become part of the lifestyle to maintain a physical and mental healthy state. Yeah, I've got two different options that, that clients can choose from at okay. first. If they're not ready for a full coaching commitment, mm -hmm. um, I do have a what's called a Feel Better Now assessment. It's a single session um, in which I have them do a self-care assessment. We try to find that that one area of impact, implement something small so they can feel better now is what that that one session is for. Um, however, it's really the, the coaching journey where they're going to see the most impact. I have an eight session coaching journey that I meet with clients mm -hmm. every other week. So we're together for about four months, but we're very intentional in that package. So we spend, and it's basically two, 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 and two um, in each one, but it it's really just dependent on the client and where they are. But the first journey is where are you? So we can look at where they are right now. What is your routine? Where is your time spent? Um, where are you feeling those stressors? How are you feeling? So it's just an assessment of exactly where they are. The second is who you are, and it's my favorite. So this one is all about them and discovering what it is that they bring to the table. What are their strengths? How do they operate in healthy states and unhealthy states? Um, it's a really strengths forward approach and a value based forward approach um, that allows for them to really get in touch with who they are because they've lost it. So what are these things that you bring forward? How do you use them best for others? How do you use them best for yourself? How do they align with this where you are stage of what you're doing every day? Then we go into where are you going? So we can really pick a focus for them and start making forward progress with everything that we've learned to change their schedule up so they have that meaningful impact. And then we do leave time at the end to make sure that that's really working for them. I want enough time to ensure that let's say they started a journaling practice, a very specific journaling practice. They're doing it, but it's just not connecting. We want a little bit of time to tweak that. So by the time they're done with the coaching journey, they feel good about where they are and they feel good about how to handle it as it changes going forward. They almost found their their strengths and go, how do I make those? And if, if I'm summarizing it properly, let me know. Make their, find their strengths at that point. They can work on those to help build that routine into their system. And you also give them that someone, I want to call it homework, to work on that skill, practice that skill, become part of the routine. So in the week, eight weeks, you've built enough of, of their, you have helped discover exactly what works for them. Now they can stick to that over the next eight, 10, 12 weeks, year, and help get that, that level of lowered stress state so they can handle their stress of their day. Yes. So strength-based and value-based. So there's a lot of asking why you're doing what you're doing. Once you've learned more about your strengths and your values, it's much easier to look at what you're doing throughout a day and ask yourself, why am I doing that? That doesn't align with who I am, with what I value. So why am I doing that? And how can I do it differently? So there's a lot of evaluation that happens there. So like I said, within that, who are you phase? It's really a recentering so that you can measure everything that you're doing from that point forward on what you found there and how it makes you feel. Your body has an emotional guidance system. And once you start mm -hmm. learning more about yourself, you can really feel if you're in line with that or if you're working against it. You're allowing people to put it per se on paper of what their values are. And then, like you said, live by them in your daily routine with their family, with friends, whatever it might be. So that point, does that change their state in eight weeks or at the end of eight weeks? All throughout. 
So, I mean, it's, it's funny because like I said, I, I, I have this systematic process, but mm -hmm. it's from day one that you're already starting to think of things oh. differently. And it's because you're having these conversations with somebody who's kind of giving, turning your words back to you. So from mm -hmm. day one, you're already starting to feel this as you go along. Um, and I do have, of course, there's homework with sessions. And then there's between session check-ins that I do on those off weeks, just asking yeah. about mindset and um, asking them to kind of perform some different exercises to get mm -hmm. them thinking differently about their day. You're almost giving them a way to change their mindset and over a period of the eight weeks. Is the eight-week session, are the sessions about four or five hours long or how long are your sessions normally? 45 minutes to an hour. Wow. Um, eight okay. sessions. So it's eight sessions of 45 minutes to an hour every other week. And um, I also, I mentioned, I, we didn't mention, I'm a tarot reader as well. So I offer tarot as a side on my coaching. It offers this really cool intuitive layer um, that just helps shape the conversation. I do offer it. Um, it's not an extra charge, but I do let the client choose whether or not they want it in their sessions. And I haven't had one say no. It's, it's, it's really fun. It's just a cool layer to add into it. You're spending not, I'm going to say not a lot of time with somebody over a week period, but also get that change. When you break it down time-wise for them, how many people say that's not valuable? I would say that, probably zero. That the coaching isn't valuable? That the time spent in the sense where you're not spending a lot of time. So um, you're being very efficient with, with the client. When someone said initially that they just can't find the time for coaching, can't find the time to figure this thing out, that almost you, you've reversed that on them to now sneak in a sneaky way, get them to realize you've only spent four every other week for eight weeks for an hour. And now we have all these changes for you. And we have all these changes for you. Yeah. And you know, when it comes to coaching, so you do, you look at these sessions, like how can I possibly get change from this? Well, one, you're taking the time to dig it, dedicate mm -hmm. yourself. You're doing it with a coach who has this specialty and is going to help you guide you into that space. Um, all that while you're gaining the perspective of, well, I mean, one, you do know you have the time because you at least took time for a session, yes. but you do have this time to start building into your life. And then, you know, I'll always ask if you're not doing this, then what will you do? Because mm -hmm. that feeling of being stuck is just one that will wear on you. And unfortunately it starts turning into, like I said, one, a lot of resentment and two, mm -hmm. a lot of negative self-talk. Because if you can't break that cycle, you start beating up on yourself for it as to it's you. For some reason, you can't do it. And you start with that negative self-talk that, again, is a specialty in, in a lot of the clients when they come to me that they've built up. Specialty. Not good. <laughs> well, a lot of it is you're giving someone an easy way and an easy, efficient time frame to now in eight weeks see a huge change of 180 degree turn in their attitude, in their lifestyle in their in their ability to, to set boundaries and find a value system they can live by for a long long time what is the other plan you said there's another plan besides eight weeks well it's eight sessions so exactly. it's about 15 weeks because okay. it's every other week got it, got it. Okay. um i also have that that feel better now assessment okay. which is a single okay. session um okay. so that we're going to go through that those seven ways of self-care there's an assessment that i have them take so that we can at least sit down and in one session find one simple thing to adjust mm -hmm. to give them that feel better now um to start implementing into their days it's not going to have the impact um but it's at least something to to get you going in the moment and and i think once someone goes through that one session feel better now okay now i know i can't do it on my own let me now figure out what else I can do in a, in a 15 week period, eight sessions. That's enough. Some someone's time that I've seen allows enough time, at least and it has to be a minimum of two months. You must say 21, 21 days is not enough time for anything to actually see someone change their lifestyle. So now their mindset, their physical state, their mental state has now become permanent as their routine is what they're used to before they started with you. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So that, that feel better now assessment is a really great appetizer. Um, so like I said, it will give you impact in that single session, but most times what it's going to do is allow you to see, um, especially if you're thinking about that coaching mm -hmm. program and you're just not ready to commit, it's going to give you the opportunity to see if one, if, if, um, client and coach is a great fit. And if you feel that what you get from that session is going to give you that long lasting impact that you're looking for, if you go ahead and jump into the coaching session. So it's, it's just an easier way to go ahead and get started and make sure that it's right for you.
And what's what's a good success story you've had so far with a client after the 15 weeks, after the eight session? What's a something you can share with us? Well, one of my favorites, um, and I'll share it with you because it, it's always one of my favorites. When the language that I'm using with the client mm -hmm. becomes so natural to them that they start using that language when they're giving advice to others. Mm. That is my favorite part. So when they have become so familiar with boundaries and, and what that does for them, that they're recommending boundaries for their friend or their family or whatever it is, this language is becoming part of their everyday. That's when I, I mean, we're seeing true success at that point. They've mm -hmm. really taken that information. They've taken it into heart. They've absorbed it into their life and they're spreading it to other people. <laughs> It's it's the it's knowing the knowledge, but also understanding and then applying it like you had mentioned. At that point now they're they're sharing the good news, I call. Yes. And and the other part of it is a lot of this is just rediscovering who you are and being comfortable and bringing that person forward. Because a mm -hmm. lot of times within the people pleasing space, you've started to bury who it is that, that you are and you're not authentically bringing yourself forward. There were, therefore, you're not living in alignment with your purpose. So what this process does is it really helps to bring you forward so that you are comfortable in being vulnerable in being yourself. Wow. Because when you bring your authentic self forward, it allows you for, to act in alignment with everything that you're doing in front of you. And you're no longer feeling the need to be somebody else. Good. So you're setting those, you're actually, again, applying those boundaries to people around you to help them understand who you want to be, to help you become aligned with what you believe in what as your values might be. Yep. And not even because you use the language who you want to be. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. Unapologetically who you are. As long as, like I said, as long as you're coming forward with love and compassion, you're mm -hmm. not there to hurt anybody else. You being who you are is, is the state that you need to be in. It allows you to connect with others. It allows you to relate with others. It allows you to shed that expectation that you should be anybody else. Good. Good. This is I don't, I don't know anybody who wouldn't be, wouldn't benefit from talking to you and just get an idea. Okay. Where am I? Am I at a good, good stage? Can I improve in anything? It's amazing how coaching you know, I've done. I've done probably a dozen different coaches from life coaches, from business coaches, from physical coaches, from trainers. Uh, a lot of it is, is when you have a coach, it helps you understand where you are from an, from an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. So at that point you become more aware of what you are in the inside. Yes. And that's, that's what I love in those sessions is when, life coaching is all about creating that space. Uh -huh. It's about creating a space for your client to really talk through everything that's going on in the inside so that the coach can hear it, but the client is hearing it too. They're hearing all of this come out. They start putting things together for themselves and they're in the spaces in which they have the blocks, the gremlins, the limiting beliefs, they have the coach to reflect that language back to them so they can start hearing it and putting those pieces together. It's just a really neat process. <laughs> and I, then, you can tell I love this. I love this. Because <laughs> you, you help people. You help people from moving forward in their life, dealing with their family. And as if they have kids and a husband, and everything else too, everyone and, and does does your client just benefit or do people in that family benefit too? People within their family. I mean, to me, when you, when you benefit, when you're coming into yourself, mm -hmm. when you're operating in your authentic self, I think everyone around you, ben everyone around you benefits. And if anyone has a fear that somebody is not going to like that person that you're stepping into, they're not going to like you for you. If someone doesn't like you for you as you start coming out as your authentic self and start creating your boundaries and start caring for yourself and feel comfortable, that person wasn't meant to be aligned with you. But to get rid of that harshness, generally speaking, those who are around you, those who love you, those who love you, when you start caring for yourself more and creating those boundaries and being authentically you, they come right along with you. They come it's right along with you. It's fear. It's fear that holds us back from doing those things. There's not, there's not as much danger on the other side as you would like to think, but you fear that there is. If someone, if, if, if someone loves you and you end up having an accident and going to the hospital and they need, and you need their, they need, you need, they need you to help them. If you really love somebody and care for them, why wouldn't you want them to be better? Why wouldn't they be healthy, healthy, healthy and in a healthy Yep. State? yep. Well, yep, that's what it is. And that, but yeah, we just, we fear loss 
Um, so we hold ourselves back from so much when really on the other side, like I said, there's, you make up those stories, you make up all those stories, all of those what ifs, rather than doing what it is that you need to do for yourself and letting the pieces fall where they may. And generally where they fall feels so much better than where you were trying to position them. No, no. Anything. And then I, what I do is I love your passion and what you do. You help people understand how to get there and you're excited for them to see it, even if they can't see it yet. I just, I care a whole lot. That's what it is. Well, and, and I mean, these are spaces that I have been in myself. These are spaces that I've been in myself that I have come forward in. So to, to be there for somebody, to show them that it really is better when you start to address these, it really isn't as scary as you would think it would be. And you're going to be so much better off all around when you do to be able to be that person to help guide them through that and to, um, for them to lean on as they go through. I just, I love the work. I love the work. It's not even work. I love it. It's it's just fun. It's when you when you do something that's that you're passionate about, it's not really work anymore, is it? It's more like I'm just trying to help people get to that state. So it makes me feel better too, on a selfish way. Yep. Yep. No, it helps me align with my purpose. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else I didn't cover on the show that we wanted to cover? I don't think so. It seems that we went through quite a bit there. I, I think you helped me understand exactly what state someone needs to stay in to have those boundaries, have the value system and live through their values. So people around them can care for them in their state of health. Well, that's what it is. I, I mean, I guess that final message is, is um, if you're not caring for yourself, who is no mm -hmm. one's going to do that for you. And no one's, there's certainly no one that's going to do it to the degree that you need to, to mm -hmm. work through this self care, those, those seven areas of self care and find out what really works for you. That's going to help you to be a stronger, more resilient, more centered, more at peace person so that you can show it better for your people and priorities. So I think part of what people fear when you work with overwhelmed, driven, do it all women, um, they fear that they're going to have to slow down and not succeed and not achieve. That's not right, the right way to look at it. You're still going to get to achieve everything it, that it is that you're going to want to achieve. But what you're going to do is make yourself a more full, a more whole person so that when you show up for your priorities and for your people, you're going to do so, do so in a more healthy way. Well, well, and then, and for people on the show too, go to the show notes, have all the links on her Facebook, her Instagram, her LinkedIn, and go to her website for the seven ways to, to self care, grab your free guide and then give Angela a call. She'll, she'll talk to you, work with you and, and guide you in the right way to make your life better and, and happier. Absolutely. Thank you. I do offer a 20 minute um, free call that they can sign up for my website. So if there's any questions from this or from anything that they pull from the website, they can just schedule a call with me and I'd love to go through it. Fantastic. Obviously, I love to talk about this. <laughs> and you're in what city are you in? I'm what in Omaha, city? Nebraska. Omaha. So she's in Omaha, Nebraska. So there'll be a time change when you set up the call with her. She'll figure it out with you. Like she would be yep. today. Yep, it'll take you right to a link so they can schedule from anywhere that they are, pick a time that's good for them. But perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you, Angela. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being on my show. And and we thank you for the information because we all need some help. Thank you so much. This is great. <laughs>